Hello once again model kit builders and miniature painters all around the world. My name is Trevor Ursulescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Well, you may remember a while ago I did an unboxing video of the old metal dwarf gyrocopter. The original white metal dwarf gyrocopter. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, let's build it. <laughs> let's build it. I want to build it. I really do. Well, today I thought I would take the paints out and uh, paint it and show you exactly what I did in order to make that model magnificent. So without further ado, let's go down to my bench and I'll show you how I painted the dwarf gyrocopter. A few years ago, I made up this gyrocopter and I painted it in the colors of Karak Eight Peaks, which of course was one of the areas that the dwarves controlled way back in 8th edition fantasy. And I just lick the colors on this, and I think that our gyrocopter that we are going to paint today will follow in the same color scheme. And it was around this time that Games Workshop released their Citadel paint lines, the current ones we use today. And uh, as you can see, there are six stages to painting these things. This is the one for Karak Eight Peaks Red, which is actually corn red. Kerberg Crimson, Wasdaka Red, Squig Orange, Kindle Flame, which is a dry brush color, and then Blood Letter, which was a glaze. These color combinations were devised by Games Workshop for different figures that they thought we would use these colors for, like Cadians for 40k. However, I'm also using these colors as Crack 8 Peaks items, like Lanterns, the interior of the Gyrocopter, and for my Forest Dwarf Army, these were the colors of the clothes. So like Castilian Green, Alothian Camo Shade, Lauren Forest, Strachan Green, and Underhive Ash as the dry brush. Now that we know what the colors are based off of that sheet, I can now begin to paint my original gyrocopter model in the same colors to match. That should look pretty good on this old antique. This, of course, is the white metal gyrocopter that I did the unboxing review of right here. So the first thing I think we'll do is paint the white underneath on our gyrocopter. And the reason why it is white underneath is basically going back to a World War I idea that if you're flying an airplane and someone is looking from the ground up, they won't be able to see it against the clouds because it's white underneath just like the real clouds. Whether or not that actually worked is another story, but we could easily paint our vintage gyrocopter up underneath here in the same white. You, uh, going under the blades, under the body, and the bottom of the wings. Now judging by the way the paint looks underneath, I do believe I used this combination a long time ago, which is Raycarth Flesh as a base color, Reichland Flesh Shade as a shade color, Pallid Witch Flesh as layer one, followed off by White Scar, and maybe some Praxetti White. And here's our gyrocopter after applying the paint. And you can see it looks quite white, yet it still has a bit of grit in there, sort of like something that would actually be used. And then underneath, we have the all white there. So if you're looking up from the ground, you can see basically the clouds. Although I'm not sure how well this would work because I'm pretty sure all this would just be silhouetted against the sky, but that's where we're at. Next, I'm going to apply the blue and red paint, and what I like about this is it's actually squared off in here, as opposed to the new gyrocopter, which is pretty straight and flat. So I could actually do a checkerboard motif in here, going a red, blue, red, blue, or whatever. And then on the tail section, you've got these nice stripes going up as well. So you can basically do this like an old World War I style airplane. So here we have our gyrocopter, and I've added in the red, yellow, and blue. As you can see, it's not too bad. I will need to do a little bit of touch-up in here. I'm using enamel yellow from Humbrol up on the front blades, but on the back here, I've used uh, the Games Workshop yellow, which I find a little bit harder to use because you got to layer it, and then, of course, it just has issues. Now, so for the gold up here, on the gun. I'm actually trying this stuff here. This is actually an alcohol-based paint. 
Something that I had for a very long time in the hobby shop, but just kind of got pushed to the back. This stuff, of course, cleans up with uh, rubbing alcohol, so something brand new to try. And so far, I like the result of it. It just laid down nice and smooth, and it is quite thick in there. So I will touch up all these areas, and then we can move on to the next color, which I think will be the uh, engine here. I'm gonna paint that with the steel color. And then there's just the wood down here for all the bracing. And once all this is painted up, then we can uh, get going on the pilot. So yes, if you want to clean up your paintbrush when you use this paint, this is the stuff you use. Next, we'll paint the engine, and it's supposed to be a lightweight type of metal. So we're going to use our lead belcher, gnome oil, iron breaker, and rune fang steel, just to make it sort of look somewhere along the lines of aluminum. Here we have the gyrocopter after painting on the silver and iron bits. And I also added in some more of that gold color. So as you can see, we've got like our rotor shaft up inside here with the gold, same as the little springs and all the emblems and the other things that are sticking out along the sides, as well as our little rune letters up here. Again, I do think this gold is pretty nice. It just lays down. The alcohol-based paint is really quite a thing. You can see how I've painted up the engine. So now really all that's left is to paint the uh, wood in here and also the little iron brackets that are all along there and the wood down on the skis as well as our bombs. And I'm not quite too sure what colors I'm going to paint those, but overall it is looking quite nice. Now for all the uh, gold where it's supposed to go, I took inspiration from the actual box top. As you can see, they've got the gun completely in gold, as well as those little things that stick out the side. They didn't paint the shaft in here with gold, but uh, overall this looks kind of nice too. But again, much inspiration for our Crack 8 Peaks gyrocopter came off of that box top. Our next color palette comes from the XV-88 Crisis Battle Suit, but I have marked it here also as Ropes and Albatross Wood. That is XV-88, Seraphim Sepia, Baylor Brown, and Zemistri Dust. Now in case you're wondering what Albatross Wood is, this is a model kit that I was building of a World War I Albatross, and you can see that the bodies on the Albatross were actually made out of plywood, and this is the paint that I used to get the Albatross wood coloring. And it will look quite nice. Hopefully it'll show up correct for our gyrocopter. For that frame that's there, it will look pretty good. And I'm still not really sure what color to paint these straps in here that are going up around our rudders. Maybe black or even a little bit of steel, because there is sort of a steel band and then it goes up and over. I'm not quite totally sure on that. And again, I would have to paint all these bands up top here, but I might not do that just because this is supposed to be white canvas, so perhaps the dwarves would have painted that white as well at the time. Here's our gyrocopter after applying all the wood to this. And as you can see, it now does start to look more like a wooden crate, just like something out of World War I. And one thing I did discover is that there are some cables running on the top of these wooden braces into the back of the ailerons. So I painted them black just so they would stand out a little bit against the wood grain contrast. Again, a lot of touch up, a lot of back and forth with the paintbrush. Underneath I decided to paint the bombs black with little white skulls on them, just as they would have been in the real war back in the day. <laughs> I don't know. But at any rate, there is our finished gyrocopter. Now all we need to do is paint the pilot and then glue him in place. Now there's not too much going on with the pilot figure himself. He only consists of two pieces. Of course his torso and head and helmet here with the hands. And then we have another arm and hand that is controlling that steam gun in the front. Now originally this model came with a square base, but because we're going to Age of Sigmar, I'm going to use this round one. Unfortunately, the square base had all these little holes where you could actually drill a hole in and mount the uh, little clear plastic stand. But on the round one, there's nothing there underneath. So what I'm thinking of doing is making it more like the modern gyrocopter where there's a little bunch of stones in the center. 
and then I will drill a hole this size into the top of the stones just to uh, be able to put the clear rod in so that we can support our gyrocopter in the air. And here we have the two pieces that make up our painted gyrocopter pilot. So I use that same red that I use and the blue. And then on the feathers here, I painted them white and then I washed them with Agrath Earthshade and then highlighted them or dry brushed them actually with white paint all over again. The gold on his helmet is all the um, alcohol based paint and then I painted his beard with the albatross wood. So I'll just crazy glue him into the gyrocopter and we can see how that looks. Here's our finished gyrocopter with the actual pilot installed. As you can see he does look pretty nice in there. It will be an interesting model to uh, put on the base. Now one thing I do want to do with this, of course, is once it's on the base, I want it to have the same elevation as the new gyrocopter because I know there was two elevation pegs in this kit with the old gyrocopter and one of them is a little longer than the other, but none of them are as long as the new bases. So what I'm thinking of is See down here, we've got the little uh, dwarf rock thing this is flying over. Well, I do have this component from the giant. And if I actually saw this off just where that little uh, pedestal thing is, I could put this right to the bottom of the base. And then if I use the short peg, it'll give me approximately the same height. I'm going to have to drill a hole in the top of this. And uh, once it's all together, it should look nice. This is the base that I created for the gyrocopter. And as you can see, it's going to be quite the thing to paint. I've got a skull on here. I made up some bricks from sheet styrene. Actually, styrene squares. I've got this funny plant from the old Wood Elf Battalion box. This is from the giant. you got the spider there. Another little stone. And then I found these mushrooms and the spare parts, as well as a little crow. So this is almost like a golden demon type of base. <laughs> Maybe I'm going a little overboard for this gyrocopter, but I do want it to be flying over some kind of weird, you know, piece of terrain. And I will end up flocking it like this, which is going to take a lot of skillful painting with the brush in between, just so I don't accidentally flock everything because what I do is I use green paint and then when the paint's still wet I put the flocking on the top and the flocking gets locked into the paint but again a lot of detail on this should look pretty good once it's all done and the big hole of course is for that clear peg to pop in just to hold the gyrocopter in place here you can see we've basically got the gyrocopters flying at the same elevation the only thing I need to do now is paint that new base and here is our gyrocopter base after I painted and flocked everything on here. And you can see like our plants, as well as the stone, the little blocks, the skull, the crow sitting on the stone. There's our mushrooms at the back. And then we've got another block with a little spider on there. And again, all this stuff is painted with various Citadel paints. Let's see what this looks like once we get our gyrocopter in place. And here we have our gyrocopter, the original. And with our modified base, you can see just how cool this thing really is. A lot of work went into that. It's interesting though that uh, the little clear stand on here is all at different weird angles and everything. However, it will line up perfectly once you see it from the front view. And here's the gyrocopter and base all together mounted from front view and you can see that it all balances and works out. And here's our two gyrocopters flying side by side 
at the same elevation. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great little video where I got to show you how I painted the old world dwarf gyrocopter. And if you've built this model kit in the past, we would love to see your photos on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link for that in the description below. While you're at it, check out our great website, www.monster-hobbies.ca to see all of our current Games Workshop model kits and everything else. And until next time, everybody, happy painting and model building.